I'm Vicky Lenane and welcome to Embrace Therapy Podcast. I am a practicing art therapist based in Ireland. In each episode, I will interview guests from various fields of therapy and well-being with the aim to encourage healing through embracing therapy. Hello everyone, welcome back to Embrace Therapy Podcast. Today I have a very lovely podcast for you. It's a bit different to the usual one. Um, because it's a collaboration with Soworth Projects, which is the place where I work with Heidi Morrison, the art therapist, in her beautiful creative arts therapy service for children, adolescents and adults. And it's based in Kill, in County Kildare in Ireland. Um, Yeah, so it's a beautiful chat between many creative arts therapists that work in the centre. Um, so it's a little bit different than what I usually do, but I'm sure you'll find the conversation and chat very inspiring and thought provoking. So what's the conversation about? We talk about the creative arts therapies and the healing that can occur when you do, um, go and attend a creative arts therapist, um, So Heidi Morrison is one of the people in the conversation. She's the co-founder of So Worth Projects and she's an art psychotherapist. And Heidi delivers, supports and advocates the integration of ecotherapy approaches in her clinical and group-based work. And we also have myself, an art therapist, um, and I suppose everybody who's maybe listening has an idea of what I do and, and what I offer. Um, but yeah, I suppose it's it's another kind of side to me, I suppose, in the work um, that we talk about. And you can hear a little bit about that in today's podcast. Um, we also have Rory Adams, a senior music therapist and clinical supervisor. And he has lots of work um experience working in the community as a musician in both community and educational settings as well and Rory qualified as a music therapist in 2005 at the Welch School of Music and Drama in Cardiff and he followed this in 2010 by completing a master's program in research methodologies. Um, Yeah so Rory adds a lovely element to the conversation bringing in his experiences as a music therapist We also have Marguerite Collins, a music therapist based in Dublin. Marguerite offers music therapy through the HSE in two different services in Dublin, alongside her own private practice based in Soworth Projects in County Kildare. And lastly, we have the drama therapist Tracy Costello, who we already know who's been on the podcast, but just for those listeners who didn't hear that podcast episode, Tracy runs her own private practice based um, in Dublin City and she also works as a social care worker in mainstream residential settings with adolescents. Um, She's also got lots of experience working in educational settings as a drama therapist. Um, She came to drama therapy through her BA in fine art. Um, Yeah, and I suppose she comes from um, a really lovely place of, of... of having an understanding of how creativity works in different modalities, which is just gorgeous. And um, she brings a lovely element to this conversation also. A big shout out to Heidi Morrison and her son, Douglas Morrison, who filmed this in So Worth Projects in the summer. And it was just such a lovely opportunity. And I think it will make for a beautiful podcast episode. Um, you can let me know by Um, getting in touch through social media or leaving some um, comments below in the YouTube or um, contacting me directly on contact at enricharttherapy.com. I'd love to know your opinion and if you want more of these kind of episodes where there's lots of people talking, um, a kind of round table discussion situation, you can let me know if that's something that you're interested in being part of as well. I'd love to hear from you. So let's jump right in to today's episode in the gorgeous setting of So Earth Projects, Kill County Kildare.
student process, but it expands with the individual and it transforms as well. And it's, um, I suppose there's no, there is a framework, but there's so much possibilities within that. Absolutely, and I think the framework is, you know, it connects all the different modalities. Um, yeah. And if we were to explain what our creative art therapies were in the sense of that, that you know, that defined piece, um, the different modalities, we, we've got the music therapy, we've got the drama therapy, um, we've got the art therapy and dance and movement. Mm -hmm. um, and with all of those pieces together, I suppose there's one thing that, there's a few things that we have in common, but the main thing is, is that playfulness within the framework that you're talking yeah. about. Um, and I think the framework is that, that, that piece of the therapeutic relationship as well. Do you know how we can... Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think it facilitates that space with the process. Yeah, you have your like your ABCs and your, your structures and your frames and your procedures, I suppose. But they're they're on this they're on the outset. I think the red thread through everything is like you know, our primary mode of communication is the creativity. So yeah. like either whether it's music, or dance, it's an expression and that's really what we offer, um, that's a bit different, you know? So thinking about our way of communicating, it doesn't necessarily have to be through language, you know? No, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. because language is quite limited as well, um, especially when you think about trauma, and a lot of our clients would bring in a lot of experiences that they don't have words for. Mm -hmm. So I think creative arts there, this, I, I would say that it's our red thread. That engagement with our thoughts and our feelings. I mean, that's quite, quite. I suppose a clear way of expressing, you know, who we are, what we are, what we feel, what we think. You know, and that connected piece is really important to be that human that we need to be. Like you say, that was to co connect most, yourself to yourself. Yeah, to be that most the, the most authentic being you can be yeah. within the safety. You know, um, and I suppose if you bring it into to therapy, that's what you hope that you can frame that for somebody, that they can be that authentic person as much as they can be, um, and be comfortable with that and be able to kind of express that. Mm. I don't know if that... Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. that really that's the nail on the head, I think. Yeah, okay. I definitely with, um, with music anyway, uh, like everybody has their song, you know? Mm -hmm. Through your whole lifespan, you know, you, you listen to lullabies as a kid yeah. and they f make you feel comforted. And, and like that, that's in all of us as well. Yeah. Even those people who <laughs> say they can't sing, yeah. you know, we listen, we hear, yeah. and, and you know, I mean, that stretches through all humanity, mm -hmm. and, you know, and even mm -hmm. vibration, you know, mm -hmm. if you can actually hear the vibration. Is what, what connects us. And connects well, that's it. People. Like your your ear is formed in your womb. Like it's one of the first things to form. So your the, your first interaction with the world is like here. And, you know, so. so really, the arts. I mean, we I suppose call them the arts because that's how we know them. But all those natural pieces like music, like sound, like like creating something physical or visual, mm -hmm. um, like drama, like movement. Embodied, yeah. Yeah, it's all, it's all very natural. It's, and it's a shame really to put into the categories of the arts in some ways. So really, how do we put this in context to therapeutic process, I suppose? Because we know with mental health mm -hmm. that we need a connection with ourselves mm -hmm. um, and need to find that true self, if you like, mm -hmm. so we can understand and have awareness around our feelings and thoughts. So we have that there's more integration of who we are, so we can behave and function the way we need to be in this world. I suppose that's that's I suppose that's what what we hope, you know, um, and partly what we hope when we meet people. Um, I don't know if anyone else wants to add to that. I, I suppose I'm struck by you know as you know it's kind of like a process piece as I'm listening, um, like what you're saying, Rory as well. You know, you're, you're reflecting all the time, and I think it's that movement piece you know, um, in your mind and how it is. But I love that it does not require verbal language. Mm -hmm. What I love about that is, you know, and you were saying it as well about kind of, we don't always have that ability to um, 
verbalise or articulate how we are. You know, um, language can be a huge barrier. It can be quite a beautiful piece. It can be an art in itself. You know, but it requires you know um, a depth of knowledge and a depth of ability and your own kind of regulation to be able to really capture what you want to say. And sometimes what we want to say is an unknown experience. Yeah. And you know we can't put words on it and we've never mm -hmm. we don't know anyone who's experienced the same way because we weren't able to tell them mm -hmm. but i would like for an example you know i find i work with young um children primary school um age and um when you know i can see they're visibly distressed their body languages that they're clammed up or they're distracted or you know mm -hmm. and i find even asking <coughs> how are you doing today mm -hmm. How are you? Fine. Mm -hmm. It's an obstacle. Mm -hmm. It's a shutdown. It's a. I know the answer to this, and this is what I can say, and this is how it will help me not, you know, have to mm -hmm. deal with whatever it is. Okay. And it's like okay. And then in those situations, it might be like we might return to work that we've done last week, which would be, you know, um, whatever piece it is. If they're coming into, you know, we might have had a, a game where we're playing, maybe it's part of the story and um, piece that we've made and we're engaging the characters and we're playing and it kind of comes back and forth and you know and they just change like yeah. they physically change in front of you yes there's that safety and i love that because mm -hmm. it gives distance then mm -hmm. for the yeah. child to be able to to try different yeah. scenarios try different things that they know in reality would be potentially threatening for them mm -hmm. um and that's the beauty isn't yeah. it of being able to play in that playfulness there's a there's like a gentle directness Yes. In the indirectness, yes, it, right. it, it, it overcomes those obstacles of language and what I should say and what society is telling me that if I say this then this will happen and mm -hmm. you know my mum will be upset or my dad might be in trouble or you know all these different things you know these yes. are just kind of other examples but yes. um, in the and I've mentioned liminal again that liminal space that kind of that that betwixt between space of the therapy space mm -hmm. the possibilities are endless and they can be safe, mm. and they can be contained, mm. and they can be just left with, you know, and that process is like that body memory they're trying out with the drama therapy um, <coughs> in different ways. I mean, there's roll and there's, there's tactile, and it's all kind of, it's almost like an application of going, you might, you might learn along the journey with the young person or the adult, the client. Um, right, I'm understanding my connection with you is that we we seem to work really well with the sand or we're working really yes, well so individualized with the yeah yeah you know, and it is a, it's a it's a dialogue yeah. that happens yeah you know and it's very tuned it's very it's tuned with the particular time absolutely it, 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 it engages you you are there you are so present for it mm. and they, their experience of your presence is that co-regulation piece it's the basis you know yeah. Yeah. and i suppose maybe that's part of the framework and then from there, that's when it's like the maybe the canvas is primed, yes. and then you can kind of go with whatever you want to do. So yeah, on that, um, how important co-regulation is, and the primary caregiver, it just makes me think about that relationship part that you mentioned, Heidi, yeah. and also the play that you brought in as well. Like we learn through play, so when we think about co-regulation, like that is a lot of the time peekaboo. Yeah. yeah, simple. Okay. Such a yeah. simple. You see me now, you don't. There's a vulnerability in that. Mm -hmm. I see that in my clients every day. So when they come into me via a child, because I do actually work quite a lot with children, um, as an art therapist, I find my main job is regulation. Um, and it is just body work. Like, mm -hmm. how are they today? How do I attune to this person? How can I meet them where they are? And then eventually the journey becomes, uh, I suppose, um, exploration of their inner world um, mm -hmm. and we get to map that out in the session and then they get to make, make sense of that and mm -hmm. um, it's such a privilege in that but again if they're not regulated they can't get there they can't make any sense yeah. and the sensory piece of that yeah the materials I mean as our therapists yeah. we have a spectrum of materials that can actually okay. regulate you know and to give that kind of grounding space mm -hmm. for them to actually be able to to interact with things that are potentially quite difficult for a child yeah. or an adult fact. Yeah, um, so if, if let's say for example I have a child coming in and uh, they they have a new sibling at home, you know this thing yes. of like I have to split 
my time with man for this baby. Um, they're angry and there also is a bit of grief there because it's a loss, you know. So they might grab the clay and they might actually pound and stretch and yeah. punch this clay. Yeah. They may not have the words for that at age six, no. but they can get that expression and that can be witnessed and then yeah. that is so powerful. Absolutely, yeah. and work through as well. So yeah. some little kind of, you know, even words might come out through that and you'll be mm-hmm. able to kind of mirror that and be able to kind of yeah. uh, support that, facilitate that expression without it being chaotic for them. Um, and it's a real validation as well so, because yeah. you're acknowledging with absolute unconditional yeah. positive regard, you know. Um, it is, it's just acknowledgement and going, you're absolutely okay to express that. Yeah, you know. Um, absolutely. And it's safe yeah. to do so. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas, I suppose, you know, in a busy household, you can imagine how, you know, it's very difficult not to respond and react mm-hmm. to a child when they're, they're losing the rag or whatever, you know? Um, so, and that's, yeah, I mean, we all, <laughs> we all know what that yeah. is. Um, but the space, the therapy space, not only gives a neutral space mm-hmm. for the client, but it also gives a space where they can explore what they need to explore in the safety mm-hmm. framework, knowing mm-hmm. that it won't be pushed back on them and they'll be heard and listened to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kind of a separation then piece of kind of feeling that this won't impact my family. Yes. Because we are, like, I mean, as a parent as well, I understand that you you just want things to go well for everybody. Yes. Yes. And you're kind of, you will kind of, why, look, just calm down. You know, yeah. you, you do that, even as a parent. Yeah, you're like, look, right. look, it's, look, I'll tell you what, just relax there for a minute and we'll sort this out in a second. Because you're not able to often give that space yeah. for those no. processes, especially no. if it is a busy household. Mm-hmm. Um, and this separate, sacred space for yes. the individual um, can, can facilitate and you know, um, support that yes, journey, you know, um, uh, and back into that integration mm-hmm. as that well. Integration. Like, and the integration is, is key, isn't yeah. it? Because if all their parts are, are not validated yes. or or understood or connected to themselves, then they're going to act out. They're not suffering from things that they, they are doing as a maladaptive behaviour as such. Yeah. That they can be what they need to be mm-hmm. and express what they need to express uh, without that destructive element to it. Um, so, yeah. I mean, kind of like the way Jung, um, Carl Jung, I love the, the shadow and the light. Yeah. And just if you deny the, the shadow for so long, it gets darker. Whereas the light and the shadow, you know, when they're integrated, you know, it's kind of like I'm. This is a part of me as well. I own this piece too, and I'm allowed for that, and I'm, prim- you know, it's permissible. Yeah. And again, it comes back to that integration again. Yeah. You know, um, there's no bad parts of us. There's just some yeah. parts that might be more challenging, That's right. and how we right. process them. More work uncomfortable them. feelings. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Because it's like that thing where. We can be bad, actually. Yeah. We can be bad, yeah. um, but it's actually just uncomfortable, painful feelings or vulnerability, really, isn't it? You know, um, and being able to be okay with that. And you often hear that, I'm okay with not being okay, you know? Yeah. Um, but within a therapeutic context, you know, that's what we, we hope to deliver and give, you know, and facilitate, I suppose. There's a lovely um, image I came across recently. Um, there's a Japanese art form which apparently it's called Wabi Sabi or Sabi Wabi, mm-hmm. I'm not too sure. But it's um, it's taking broken things and putting them back together again. Okay. And it uh, uh, it's the idea of say a vase or something like that is re put together, but it's going to have all its cracks and it's going to yeah. it's going to look like it had been broken, but it's put together again. And there's value given and there's beauty seen. In, it's like Leonard Cohen, kind of, you know, yes. where, where the crack is where the light gets yeah, in. Where the light yes. gets yeah. in, and that sort of thing. Because I think I've seen that, and it's like they, they kind of um, elevate the value by placing gold in the cracks. I think they crack. It's something to that effect, and it's kind of going, the learning that we gain from the difficulties, you know, the. Yeah, I mean, it's not fair to say either that we all need to have really traumatic experiences, but we can definitely find gold in them. But you've got a normal life has that's difficulties. Yeah, yeah. Human suffering. Do you know, pain human suffering. suffering. Yeah. That's there what it is, is to be suffering human. in being a human 
being yeah. and, and that's beautiful. how we integrate yeah, yeah how we integrate our suffering and our shadow is how we become fully human if you like yes i like that even our brains like one side is very critical thinking and the other side is creative thinking and i think society just doesn't put even though it's the same size on both sides people just don't put as much emphasis on the creative side as they do on the critical side and it's such a shame because like we're all artists musicians drama therapists here and um, when we get into the creative zone when we're actually creative creating something hours could go by and it's it's this sense of meditation sense of calm sense of purpose and we're trying to do this we're trying to instill this in our in our clients and get them to do the same as us you know because it has great value doesn't it it yeah and holding that space is just so important you know it's so important um like an example now, I have I have one client who's uh, he he's a man and he's very recently like retired, um, like he worked his whole life as like a beautiful boat and uh, the year after he retired he got diagnosed with Parkinson's and he's taken up music therapy with me and he is flying. Um, he plays djembe, he plays um, the fiddle, he sings songs about boats all day long and will shout them out, you know, and we've done a lot of songwriting, but for those, like, for that meditative space, he's kind of gotten very used to African rhythms, and for that, like, 10 minutes, he's not a man with the diagnosis of Parkinson's, he's, he's, he's not, he's, he's a musician, you know, he has a new lease of life, and it's have meaning and purpose yeah, and we as so humans great. need that don't we we need that yeah. we need that relationship with ourselves mm-hmm. um, sure. I love that idea of meditative space because I think that that's also that red line between us you mm-hmm. know yeah. and you know Vicky we know about flow as art therapist mm-hmm. um, and how flow um, is I suppose the word mm-hmm. that we can identify as being that space that meditative mm-hmm. space where you're in the moment and time goes by. I mean, I was working with uh, within a group in a hospital setting there uh, recently uh, with adults, um, and yeah, amazing process. Um, this lady just didn't realise that two hours had transpired, um, and she was like, she kind of lifted her head and she was like, "What time is it?" <laughs> You know, she was really lost in the moment and she said to me, well, it was great because I felt like I didn't have to think, do you know, I just I just could do and just be. Um, and walking out the door, she was lighter, she was a lighter person for it. Um, and she's connected with things that perhaps she didn't connect if she it was a talking kind of scenario. Um, and yeah, I mean, this happens over and over and over, the simple examples, but it's, it's true, isn't it? You know, that meditative, that, that, that important space that we hope to facilitate yeah. as therapists um, so that they can be yeah. themselves, perhaps where they can't be other places. Yeah. Yeah. But even this space, like, it's, it's so beautiful and, like, within it, you just feel so safe. I don't know if that's just me, but, like, I, I rent that little uh, attic room upstairs and I think it's because I grew up in an attic as well. It was always like, yeah. I'd run upstairs and everyone, my brother was chasing me around <laughs> and hide, you know? But like, I think that comes across with my clients. Like I've created the space safe for myself. So it almost like exuded onto them, yeah. Oh, that's really good to hear. Do you know, it is about that safety, that play space, that feeling that it's not overly clinical, do you know, that it's a place where they can relax and be. And I think, you know, as you say, I think that this space, that's what we've built it, we've purpose built this space to, uh, I suppose, bring that to the clients, bring that to the services. <laughs> um, you know, enable that for them to feel comfortable, safe, yeah. held, all those words that we know as therapists are so important yeah. with our clients. Yeah. The elemental importance of 
feeling safe we've mentioned it a few times and in actual fact therapy can't happen in fact life can't happen until you do feel safe and what uh, what you provide here is a beautiful space but it's possible to create a safe space for people here and what creative arts therapies do each of them is enable people to feel safe enough to actually become playful mm -hmm. because like it's been said that the most important thing for a therapist is to enable the person they're working with together to be playful yeah. and you've got to be feel, you've got to feel safe before you can do that and you can talk about that in a kind of a but we've talked a lot about embodied things as well and it occurs to me that uh, creative arts therapists are expert at being with somebody mm -hmm. and uh, being able to contain whatever the energy is. I think yeah. that's what creative art therapists are good at doing is meeting the real person where they are at. Yeah without expectation of, uh, of anything, actually. Expectation is a good point, because yeah. I do actually think that some people who may think of creative art therapies as an option for themselves may be put off by the idea that there is an expectation to be an artist, yeah. you know, yeah. or a musician, or, you know, something of performance. Or you know, or an adult might think they have to be like a child, mm -hmm. do you know, and that mm -hmm. kind of freaks them out as well. Yeah. So, expectations are a funny one because actually we're trained to facilitate that creative connection, and of course, you know, anybody walking into a space may feel intimidated by the process, mm -hmm. but actually at the same token, they realise, oh, I can do this, I can connect with this. You know, I don't have to be an artist, I don't have to be a musician. <laughs> It can be me here. And I think that that's the beauty as you say, creative arts therapists are trained to facilitate that. And I think it's an important point actually that, you know, one shouldn't be afraid of coming to a creative arts therapy space. You do not have to be proficient or, or professional or a child. Yeah, you don't have to perform. It's not performing. Well. Yes. You know, in our sessions, depending on what's presented to me, yeah. I will do um, songwriting with them, yeah. they'll experience things together, yeah. they'll let their feelings out yeah. Yeah. through their own song, you yeah. know. Yeah. Um, and another way we can like do a lot of drumming, we can yeah. like we can play instruments and then like it's their session as well. Yeah. So they tell me what they want, you know, they tell me what kind of music they like yeah. and it's meeting that person where they're at with that. Absolutely yeah. like more like it's such a it's such an eclectic Absolutely. bag of tools we have but they're uh, we have instruments that you know you pick them up kalimbas they're so easy to play you know and there's no right way or wrong way of playing it mm -hmm. and we just match them and yeah. play chords to go along with them and you know it's yeah. so nice and even just matching their like there's, I know a, a few of the boys that I work with here um, or girls they would they would have autism and, and they would have like repetition behavior stimming um, but like, yeah, I even noticed like one boy is rocking back and forth and he's doing it in like six, eight time and I was like, you know, we were playing jigs and like, yeah. you know, it was great, like it was really good job. Like, yeah. <laughs> and he was just like, yeah. oh, if I, if I go slower, she'll go slower. And he was, it was so wow. grateful, you know, wow. it was great. It was like, you're yeah, really definitely fun. meeting where he was. Yeah. And like when he yeah. left, you know, he was like, you know, ready to give his mom a hug, and you know, there's just so much love that comes out of us. I think we're creating a lot of magic in these rooms. Mm -hmm. and, and tell me, I know you mentioned earlier, a while back, about this little boy that, that is struggling with speech. Yes. I'd love to hear about that a bit more. Oh yeah, so, um, yeah, part of part of my session would be to sing a, a hello song to welcome yeah. welcome them in, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, like we do a hello song, a goodbye song. And, yeah. You know, I would structure my my sessions around that. But uh, yeah, after two or three weeks, like he's never said hello or how are you to his parents. But my song like was like hello, and then the boy's name. I'll just say his name was John. So <laughs> like because I can't give anything away. But um, like, hello John, hello, how are you today? And he would go back and then he started saying, hello mummy, how are you today? And singing it. So it's like, it's just a different connection, you know, in the brain. Wow. <laughs> it's fun, yeah, it's fun, yeah. 
So yeah. it's the first time he's ever asked anybody how they were or to say hello. So yeah, it was, it was very powerful. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's worth noting as well that the creative arts therapies, they kind of, like, you do get, like the wellness days as well, you do get an experience. You are there at the moment experiencing something that is very, very useful to you. But that example just absolutely perfectly shows the fact that the experience you're getting is something that is transferable, even if it's only feeling safe, not something as profound as actually beginning to speak and ask your mother how she is, that's just brilliant. Mm -hmm. But even if it's only feeling safe in that space, yeah. then that person knows they have the capacity to feel safe, yes. and it will be easier for them yeah to recognise feeling safe the next time because sometimes people just don't know what that feels like. Yeah. So, the creative arts judged, therapies... Yeah, that I can be who I can be without being slammed down or pushed away or being a bull guy, <laughs> you know? That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Learning, yeah. Yes. yeah. It's transferable. Yeah. It's just, just for the moment. Yeah, yeah. And the art therapy, oh my gosh, like the spectrum and... You know, often people talk about play therapy, but we use storytelling so much, you know, in the art process and we can control the image, you know, um, and that's the beautiful thing when we talk about play, you know, and um, the scope of play, and, you know, you can actually have a world with an image, yeah. Um, yeah. and the child's in a world reaching, meeting, I suppose, the actual world of the therapist in the room, so that kind of connection is so important that they can express their inner world through their own world in an image because it is the, the amazingly powerful yeah. to connect with. I also um, you know would work with teenagers um, mm -hmm. and you know there's a lot of rejection at that age as well you know they're trying to find their tribe and they might uh, get rejected you know yeah. quite a lot in school yeah. Um, and then there's this expectation on them to do well with their grades and everything. So they kind of don't play. <laughs> um, but here in the space, I also have the room upstairs and um, I have sand trays. And sand trays are incredible because they are a moving picture. So everything that we do in our tidy, mm -hmm. it can be put in the tray mm -hmm. and it can be moved. Mm -hmm. And I suppose what we were kind of saying earlier as well, like we can kind of change our ending of our story as well. We can kind of play things out, try things on for size. Um, and I think teenagers really like the sand tray because they get to like, you know, do the role play as well. Like a drama therapist would take that approach. Yeah, and like put themselves like in this position, put their friends in different positions and work things out. Well, that went this way, but I'm going to make it this way and actually see what happens here and how does that make me feel. So it's problem solving as well. So it's like giving them their power back. So they don't leave here feeling less. They actually leave feeling quite full and um, I suppose, yeah, empowered is probably the best way to describe it, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, our therapy, it doesn't have um, many rules to it, I suppose. Like, we would have the, the beginning, like you were saying, and the end. And then there's this middle part where anything can happen. Um, so, you know, I, I work with everyone of all ages. I've worked with um, people at the end of life, you know. So, again, that kind of cyclical kind of thing that you were talking about, Tracy. Um, and just how powerful art is because... You know, image like you know, there's so much that can be said in an image. Yeah. Um, and yeah, for teenagers, I'm finding that they really like the sand tray. Um, but even like trying to make something out of nothing, <laughs> like so, getting newspaper and tearing it apart and making collage. Like there's a lot in that developmentally that we go back to. We return to that part yeah, of us. Like yeah. yeah, but allowing that. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, attachment is important with our caregiver, but attaching paper with glue and making it stick, it's, it's actually a developmental stage that sometimes can be missed. Um, and then that kind of cooperative play as well, part of developmental stages, often can be missed due to, you know, a sudden loss in the family or just, um, you know, 
maybe it is just a misdiagnosis of something as well. So there can be disruption in, in developmental stages that can actually be repaired. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty. You know, that, that's in the way you think about, you know, when working even with adults, for example, you know, um, and we know with trauma, you know, words are way too direct for people. Um, and, and the power of having a creative form to be able to communicate mm -hmm. something of their bodily experience so that they can actually move something mm -hmm. stuck inside. In, you know, in an embodied way. In an embodied way. Mm -hmm. um, it's such a powerful thing. And for adults who have never had the opportunity to process, to work through the trauma that sits with inside them and traps them, actually, um, this, this vehicle that we have named through art can be such a powerful vision, mm -hmm. uh, a, 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 I suppose, a, a powerful medium to use, you know, and I see it with my clients. I mean, I have, I have many clients that I'm thinking of right now who, who use this as a, as, a, as a space to kind of move on, move mm -hmm. on with their feelings and you can see, you know, the change in their lives, like it's incredible. They can be with themselves a lot more in silence. Do you know, whereas before everything was just trying to fill those gaps yeah. um, and to manically whatever behaviours they might pick up along the way to try and manage their lives in that way. So it's very, you know, as we know, it's very a sensory experience. It's a very embodied experience mm -hmm. to be able to kind of put something down, I to externalise something. When you speak of trauma yeah. and an awful lot of the difficulties that we human beings experiencing uh, uh, as human beings is actually stuff that we haven't been able to process. Yeah. I mean, something of itself isn't traumatic unless you're not able to kind of work through it and get, you know, and move on from it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say actually even more so that um, um, the creative arts therapies are useful for people who have that kind of a situation, some trauma that they need to work on or some developmental trauma or whatever. That's horrific. It actually, yeah. it, it actually has to be through um, has to be the creative through arts because you do not have... Trauma lives in the body, it's yes. an embodied thing, it's an embodied yes. experience and you must work through the body and you must work through the implicit and you must work through the symbolic and the metaphor and such like to try and approach it because you cannot approach it cognitively. You can't actually talk yourself out of being traumatized. Yeah. You have to actually physically embody uh, uh, development through it. Yeah. It's got to come You're going from the body up, you're going from the bottom part of the brain up to reach down yeah. where the, yeah. the cognitive can then go, yeah. ah, so that's what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 story, yeah. the story comes much later. The, yeah. the experience, yeah. It's, yeah. it's um, experience first and then you try and make sense of it. Mm -hmm. Yes. But if you if you can't first of all kind of process the experience that you've had, it's just in there trapped and waiting trapped to be to word. be dealt with yeah. and uh, the creative arts therapies enable you to approach this hurt, whatever it is, um, in a way that you can actually work with it because yeah, you can't exactly. talk about it because yes. you can yeah. keep on you can tell your story but you're stuck yeah, there. It's a narrative rather and than it's yes. narrative. It's not it's, yeah. 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 It's kind of like a, a, a soundtrack and it can become into a loop instead of actually being, um, as you said, follow through. Yeah. The role play, you know, that could be done by projecting it onto the story and then the embodiment piece where we use theatre games. And the embodiment piece would be like literally running around. We have this game where we use dodgeball. Mm -hmm. Now it's a different type of dodgeball, it's a cushion, <laughs> so we try not to hurt each other. Um, but they give it a whack and it's great and they said like, of logging it out and just loving it and of course I can't engage it so well you know right now at the moment um, so I'll stand back and I'll witness you know and I'll almost you know um, yeah I just suppose I'm just a witness really you know um, and the, the, the minder in that mm -hmm. and they'll run and they'll run and they'll be about to get caught and I'll see like I'll just take like a snapshot in my mind like I'm the director and like caught you know yeah. freeze and everybody's like oh and they're in these right. kind of contorted conditions, or uh, postures, you know, and I'll make sure obviously nobody's in a funny position where they fall over, I'll go to that person first. I go, what's going on? You're in a scene, you're right in the middle of the scene, what's your character doing? And they'll take inspiration from the work and they're like, and somehow they bring in these 
really difficult figures, mm. these really difficult characters. They're not always just the man or the kid. There can be, you know, really graphic, scary people that we know exist in the world. They bring in the yuck mm -hmm. and they process it. And I'm going, oh my goodness, and tell me why is that? Why is this guy peeping Tom? You know, right, and where, what's his story? Okay, great, and what's he gonna do? Okay, and then we just, okay, go back to it again. They all unfreeze and they do their pieces and they run through them again. And then they come back and they reflect. And it's a kind of a case of going, how is everybody? We need to de roll. You know, we need to separate ourselves from the character piece, but we, let's reflect on that. What was that like? You know, what will you remember about this session? Um, oh, yeah, I thought it was so funny when you said that, you know, such and such. You know, and then someone else go, they'll offer, yeah, but he was really creepy. Yeah, he was really creepy. Yeah, no, I mean, that was really weird. And there can be some kind of like a validation of it all. And then it's just left there. It's like, right, well, that was the story. That's great. You know? And they didn't even realize it. But and you get to use abandonment yeah. and fear yeah. and things where there's that kind of I shouldn't really be talking about this. Yes. But yet they need to process yeah. it. And they process it in those ways, in those really monster, monster scary and they get to process them as the monsters. Do you know what I really love when you're talking here is that we're almost like facilitators of this thing that they didn't know what they were doing. Do you know like it's like an engagement? And we know that with mental health, you know, it, the, the biggest problem is engagement, yeah. you know, and and that obviously means, you know, uh, someone to facilitate or to connect with their thoughts and feelings, mm -hmm. you know, and how how this process, mm -hmm. like this process, can nearly, can nearly kind of guide them into them without actually them knowing that they're engaging yeah. with it, and actually then finding out later, oh, I feel better for that, that's yeah. kind of lifted something for me, I've yeah. connected with something in a genuine, genuine way. And what I really picked up from your story is the fact that the, that the guys didn't know what was going on and then yeah. this amazing integration happens yeah. where they're all almost like parts in their own story yeah. and kind of like in each other's story and having. Yeah. But what's amazing is when, okay, so the guys didn't know that they were engaging in really deep yeah. therapy yeah. Yeah. in that situation. You didn't know either <laughs> no. what the story was. It wasn't important that you knew. In fact, it was important that you didn't yeah. know mm -hmm. because it couldn't unfold if you had a kind of a, um, um, a camera action stuff yeah. going on. It, it happened because... It's organically. It was organic. Yeah, it was My thinking brain would have gotten in the way. Yeah. So right. I'm um, on, we are as attuned as we can be. We are just letting and holding and with the parameters of the safety of the space. You know, and it is a development and it's a journey and relationship that, like that, we were talking about the phases of a session, but the phases of the process of the journey can be like, you could have four or five weeks where it seems superficial, you know, where we've just played games, you know, or I mean, you know, um, you'd question kind of going, am I there for them? Am I supporting them in the right way? You know, and they they might be questioning going, should we just play games? You know, and they it just think layers. That. <laughs> it just layers, yeah. and layers, and layers, and, yeah. and I suppose it's the trust in the process yeah. as, the, as the practitioner, yeah. and for the clients to trust the process that they keep coming back. They're not really sure why they keep coming back, but they come back anyway. Yeah. And then you get to that middle state stage where it's kind of going, oh, we're here, yeah. we've arrived, and you see the difference. Yeah. 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 yeah, and like that, you trust it because you, 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 you're, you're like, you are confronted with the unknown. And you have to trust the process as creative art therapists. Yes. You have to trust the process because then the client can trust yes. then their play process and also, you know, their explorative kind of um, process. You know what they need to kind of connect with, engage with. Like you were talking about doing some like nature yes. outside. So I'm yeah, I'm so interested yeah. in nature-based art therapy. Like ecotherapy mm. is kind of, I suppose, a trendy thing now. But why is it trendy? We've been locked up for two years. Like you know, we need some connection again with nature. And you know, I think so Earth is just incredible, Heidi, in that way because obviously the mother of all of us mm. is you know earth like you know so thinking about it that way but we naturally regulate when we're in nature yeah if we go for a walk 
if we go for a run, mm-hmm. feeling our feet on the floor, it's a body connection, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so yeah, bringing people out into the garden, yes. it's just incredible. Yeah. Do you bring our sessions out there? Quite I know. Really times yeah, there. quite a few times. It doesn't matter what the weather is like, actually. Mm-hmm. You know, if people have um, a relationship with nature and they are comfortable in nature, mm-hmm. some people, you know, it's not for everybody, but absolutely with most of my clients they want to go outside yeah, yeah, okay. and even if they're not outside they bring it in yeah. I can hear the birds oh that's a track you're going by yeah. that reminds me of my granddad or you know it brings through it brings it's up it totally it does it's provoking yeah yeah definitely. and I love the idea of using nature because we all use nature you know as a symbol and we talked about symbols earlier but you know, using them as symbols of play, you know, our story making, of connections, of thoughts and feelings. I mean, it's fantastic when you, when you do use natural materials, yeah. uh, not only for the sensory piece, mm-hmm. um, the regulating piece, but also the symbolic piece of mm-hmm. being able to talk through the materials that we have yeah. um, around us, around us here in summer as well, you know. Um, and again, it's, it's a private space, so people feel safe here mm-hmm. um, when, they, when they go out and they can explore. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so it's a very integrated experience, really, you know. Um, every sense has been stimulated. Yeah. You know, I, I recently heard an OT talk about eight senses. We don't have five, even more. Group work as well, and how group work really can be facilitated in this space. Um, and this, this space is kind of used for groups and things. I know, Rory, we were doing self care groups wonderful, together. Wonderful yeah. for participants and for facilitators. Mm-hmm. It was, it was a, a very lovely space to work in. Um, and uh, circle drumming outside or inside is uh, uh, brilliant, and we've done that, and we've done improvisational music responsive at a group level to the group that is present in the room as some of the group are creating art, mm-hmm. visual art. Um, so and it's been really great. It's a lovely space to work in. It's work with you, Gory, because I think from you know using the different you know arts and bringing that to a space where it's framed therapeutically, even though it's not strictly therapy, it's using it as a as a framework around how we how we work with people, I think it's very powerful for people to feel, yeah, that as a group, as a team, they can connect with themselves, work with, connect connect with the team, um, and feel that sense of kind of space for themselves for the day. So I think that was really good. It was lovely to um because the part of what it is you offer is to get out into a working farm as well and to yeah. see the different aspects and the the um, what would you call it the, the biodiversity and and environmental interest that you have here um, yeah. and and the, the enthusiasm for it mm-hmm. um, and to see different responses you know like some yeah. people were reminded of you know oh, I grew up in a farm and some other people had never been in a farm before and it, it's just lovely to get out and to be together in yeah. nature is just. Yeah. It's just wonderful. Well, it's very much, isn't it, that reciprocal kind of relationship. You know, we, we, I suppose we don't give, but we enable the space to, to rewild as such. We get so much from that as well, you know, mentally, physically, you know, yeah. um, and yeah. that, that's the vision really, is that connection yeah. with nature. It's a nice place. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. thank you. It is yeah. a nice place. It reminds me, um, all the time working with uh, somebody, say, with intellectual disabilities or something, that I have so often realised that in working with somebody with intellectual disabilities, we are facilitating something, but always you're actually getting so much yourself as well, and that isn't said enough for those people that you work with often. But it's the same with nature, like, you know, you're doing this and that and the other for nature, but you're getting so much back. And the, this like, Mother Earth is kind of saying thank you very much with so, kind of, you know, yeah, every yeah, yeah, yeah. bit of extra oxygen that's coming our yeah, way yeah. and every bird sound and all the rest of it. It's, 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 yeah, it's yeah. a lovely space. Oh, it's fun, you know, and, you know, that, that integrating of the arts as well with that, you know, for the day, for people, for staff. Mm-hmm. You know, for people who help people, 
Um, I think it's so important that we offer that. Um, and, you know, that just getting away from the office and, and feeling, okay, I can, I can do this. There don't have to be artists again, yeah. do you know? Yeah. So I think that was the initial concern, which is natural, a concern like that. This is out of my comfort zone, I'm not an artist, you know, what am I supposed to be doing here and all this kind of thing. But you know, they relaxed at the end of the day, didn't they? It was great yeah. to well, have them in well multiple done. groups, well, actually. Well done to those facilitators that enabled well them to... Well done to them. To, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I can only surmise, though, the experience of being here as, you know, it's reflective of the... the transformation piece of the journey with the client but this nature isn't static no. and we're not meant to be static that's it and it creates and it breaks down mm-hmm. and it returns and it, you know that's cyclical you know mm-hmm. and even for those self-care groups to bring yourself out of that concrete architecture mm-hmm. into something far more tangible and you don't need to put words about you experience it. Yeah. Um, I can imagine it can be quite a vulnerable space as well if you're in that kind of, you know, that yeah. that, um, that urban setting. Yeah. Um, and even as a practicing therapist within the inner city mm-hmm. area, it's quite built up. Mm-hmm. And you can feel it, and you feel it in the body, you feel it in the environment, you know, and you make do, you work with that. Mm-hmm. But, like, this is invaluable, you know? Yeah. It yeah. gives room for the soul, it gives room for, you know, and I would personally feel very, very well with this. And if I'm feeling well, I can share that a bit more myself. So, yeah. you know, it, it's a reciprocal, it, like, what, you know, the facilitators with the, um, the participants, mm-hmm. you know, the therapist with the client, mm-hmm. it's that attunement and that connection. Yes. And so it all, yeah. you know, and you can watch this mm-hmm. as it moves over the seasons. And, um, yeah, it's just beautiful. Like yes, and I think I think I suppose the, the beauty of the self care groups, you know, also it's it's nice in, in a sense to know that you're actually providing an experience rather than teaching someone about self care, because mm-hmm. um, I suppose there's an exhaustion to that, mm-hmm. you know, um, that it's all cognitive rather mm-hmm. than experiential. Um, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Kind of we're not teachers. The great thing is about creative arts therapies, and especially in this space, is that we offer a few things, don't we? <laughs> we offer individual therapy here, um, uh, which is fantastic, both in uh, music and art therapy, hopefully drama therapy eventually. Um, so it's great to have you here, Tracy. And then as we were discussing, we, we run self-care days as well, which is fantastic. So yeah, that's on through the year, um, which is really, really great. Um, so yeah, and we will develop our group group um, work as well. Um, Vicky, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so there's going to be, I suppose, like, I'm dying to get back into groups. Um, yeah. I love group work. Yeah. Um, I think it's just amazing, the group dynamics and everything. So there will be groups in the summer. Yeah. Do you think that art is, in, in general is a mechanism for change? So I like, do you think change will happen? with another drama therapist, which yes. is yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Um, that's the great thing about this space is that we're all independent therapists mm-hmm. and we bring our own skill set mm-hmm. to the space. Um, and the great thing as well is we can collaborate between ourselves as well, which is really powerful and I'm certainly delighted about yeah. that. I mean, it's, it's a bit of a dream now. Yeah. So, um, I feel very privileged to work with to all of you. Yeah. And like it, it's a very empowering thing. Yes. And, uh, be surrounded, you try to find your tribe when you're a teenager, but yeah. I feel like I've found one here, <laughs> you know, under the roof of the oh, tree. Under <laughs> the root! Yeah. Huge affirmation and validation yeah. of yeah. your experience and what you bring and what can be shared with. Yeah, yeah it's really, it's, it's a, just, it's gorgeous, like. Oh, thank you. It's great to, great to hear that, you know, um, because I suppose it was a drawing board stage about five years ago. Um, and this place has just been built over the last year and we're opening now so um, and we're running quite quite fast and steady which is really good Um, a lot of referrals coming in um, and hopefully good things will come Um, but it's really reaching out to the community um, and this is our heart because we come with a heart um, and that's I think that's our vision is just to come with what is authentic and real 
and for us and as a body of therapists as well, it's fantastic. It has been a pleasure to be part of the discussion with people who are so enthusiastic and energetic about the work. It's brilliant work. Yes, it is. Very (laughs) nice. I really hope that you enjoyed today's podcast episode and like I said at the beginning if you do have any comments I'd love to hear what they are and you can get in touch with me on social media I'm on um, Instagram and Enrich Art Therapy on Facebook TikTok Instagram and through email contact at enrichartherapy.com and I'll see you next week for a new podcast episode Take care.